a very warm welcome to WS Cube Tech. So guys, in our previous session, we have covered that what are stack plots. In our today's session, we'll be talking about violin plots. So guys, as the name itself is telling that violin plot over here looks like a violin. Let's have a look on how does it looks like. So this is how a violin plot looks like. So we will be creating these kinds of plots today. That now how does how to read a violin plot is very simple. Wherever the thickness is more, wherever the thickness is more, the density of data is more at that place. So basically, here the, th the density of data is more, uh, which is between the range of let's say 90 to 110. So this is this is why the thickness over here is more. So this is how we can read a violin plot, and the range can be defined by these, and the range can be defined by these whiskers over here. That till where the range of these whiskers are going. Now let's have a look on how a violin plot can be plotted. To plot a violin plot, first of all, we'll import matplotlib. So I'll be writing matplotlib.pyplot as plt. After that, I'll also import numpy as np. Once I have inputted both of them, I'll be taking a value in x. So x is equals to np.array. And I'll be taking uh, different values over here. So we can take the data like, for example, 10, 40, 30, 50. Um, comma 60 comma 30 comma and it's not 60 it's 60 now 50 comma 30 comma 40 comma 70 comma 50 comma 60 so I'm just taking some random values over here 80 comma 30 comma 20 comma 50 comma 80 okay this is how I have taken the values now what I want to plot I want to plot a violin plot and this is not 60 so let's just make it 60 now and for that we will be writing plt dot violin plot and here i'll be passing my x variable inside this so this will create one violin plot over here and we will also write plt dot show open close the parentheses plt dot show should be in the next line so plt dot show open close parentheses this is how our violin plot looks like and as you can see over 50 the density is more like 50 is occurring one two three and four times over here so that's why density over here is more that's why the thickness of the violin plot over here is more if i would have written let's say 70 a lot of time for example here it would have been 70 here it would have been uh, 70 and again here it would have been comma 70 okay so we have 70 like one two three four times and if i run it so this is how it, it would look like that over here now the now density is increasing towards the 70 so this is how we can so this is how we can read a violin plot so this is a basic simple violin plot now we have uniform distribution we have normal distribution in our violin plot let's have a look on how these distribution works so again i'll be importing both these libraries over here and once we have imported them we will be creating two variables one will be the normal one where we will be having the normal distribution and i'll be writing np dot random dot normal and here i'll be passing some values let's say 70 comma 10 comma 100 and we we'll just plot plt dot violin plot and i'll be passing uh, its violin plot and i'll be passing normal inside it now let's run and see so okay we have as plt is missing here and let's write plt dot this is how a normal distribution looks like similarly uh, similarly if you want a uniform distribution over here we'll be creating another variable called as uniform and uniform is equals to np dot a range i'll be taking a range between minus 50 to 50 so minus 5 comma 50 and then here only i'll be writing plt dot uniform uh violin plot I'll be writing violin plot and it should look like this violin plot i'll be passing uniform inside it and as soon as we run it so here you can see we have a uniform plot right now over here this is how a uniform plot look, plot looks like and if you can do, if you want to put this inside the comment we can put this inside the comment as well if i run it this is how basically a uniform plot looks like and this is how a violin plot or like a uniform plot and a normal distribution plot looks like okay similarly if you want to change its axis over here here we can write vertical is equals to i will be giving the value as true so we have we have one in a vertical axis and if i keep it vertical is equals to false if i if i want to keep it uh, i want to change its axis then now if i want to change its axis suppose i want to change its axis in that case i'll be writing vertical so right now it is vertical right the violin plot is vertical like this if i want it to be horizontal in that case what i'll be doing i'll be writing false over here so vertical is equals to false as soon as we run it here you can see we have a vertical plot now so this is a vertical violin plot uh, this is a horizontal basically plot not a vertical plot but this is now a horizontal plot over here so this is how you can plot a violin plots if you want to plot multiple violin plots if you have multiple data and you want to plot multiple violin plots in that case uh, we'll be again importing both the libraries over here so i'll just copy this data from here and like paste it here and okay looks much better now 
and we'll be taking the seed value over here so that uh, everyone should get the same data over here so np dot random dot seed and here i'll be writing 10 over here or you can write 2 or whatever is your choice then we can give then we can give y1 so y1 is equals to np dot random dot normal and we'll start with 100 100 comma 10 and goes up to 200 Similarly, we will be creating another variable called as y2, y is equals to np dot random dot normal which will have, let's say this time it will have 95 here, 95 comma 10 comma 200. Then we have y3 is equals to np dot random dot normal distribution where we will be writing uh, 90 comma 10 comma 200. And lastly, we'll be having y4, which would be equals to np dot random dot normal. And here it would be 80 comma 10 comma 200. Okay. Once we're done with this, we'll be right, we'll be putting them inside a list. So we'll be writing y is equals to y1 comma y2 comma y3 comma y4. After this, I'll be creating a plot. For that, we'll be writing plt dot violent plot. And inside this, for the x, we have uh, inside this, we will be passing our y here. And as soon as we run it, this is how our violent plot basically looks like. And we need to write plt dot show as well. So plt dot show open close the parentheses. And this is how our violent plot basically looks like. So we have a violent plot over here. This is how it looks like. Okay. Now, if you want to show other things, for example, you want to show the mean values, you want to show the median value in that case what we can do we can over here define a uh, show means that means it will show the mean value over here and we'll put it as true as soon as we run it now you can see there is a dash uh, that means there is a horizontal line in between of all of them this is the mean value similarly if you want to show the median value in that case we'll be writing show median is equals to true and as soon as we run it and similarly if i talk about other functions that it has we have over here it has vertical widths we have talked about uh widths are nothing but widths are just if you want to define the width of it you can define the means then we have show means over here similarly just like how we have show means we have show medians as well so we'll be writing show medians is equals to true and as soon as we run it, we'll get the median medians value as well. Now you can see the thickness of uh, thickness of the line has been increased a bit. Remove this from here, and now we'll be having the median values over here. Okay, so we have show means, we have show medians, and we have more functions as well. We can just uh, tap over here and see there are different functions over here. We have quantize, we have show extrema, and different values are there, which are much of them are not of use. But yes, if you want to use them, you can use them over here. So well, this is how our violin plot basically looks like. This is how the distribution looks like. And if you want to provide it with the colors, then again, just like how we colored the box plot. Similarly, we can color them as well. Right. But uh, over here, the inbuilt function color is not there. So, like, as, so as of now, if I just write over here and you can see the color option is not there. So you need to iterate and then color them. But yeah, as of now, I guess the violin plot over here is clear to you. The basics of violin plot is clear to you. So guys, in our next session, we will be talking about step plot. So stay connected, guys and I'll see you in the next session. Thank you.